His songs are unmistakable. Their power to move us, undeniable. His legacy transcends generations. Tonight, we celebrate the music of the Army Air Force's own Glenn Miller, featuring the United States Air Force Band Airmen of Note. The United States Air Force Band Singing Sergeants. He's a boogie boogie man, the boy of Company P. And guest vocalist, Veronica Swift. Featuring the U.S. Air Force Band. A Glenn Miller Swing celebration, starting now. Glenn Miller was an American big band trombonist, arranger, composer, and band leader during the swing era. In 1923, he would begin his musical career in the Centennial State, Colorado. Late in his high school tenure, Glenn's love of big band style music blossomed. He would eventually abandon his college studies to pursue a career in music. He went on to become an accomplished trombonist Ultimately, Miller would find his niche in arranging and composing music. His tenacity and drive would lead to him traveling across the country, alongside some of the most prominent big bands of the 1930s. After collaborating with legendary vocalist Bing Crosby, he got the itch to develop his own unique sound, and finally, his own band. By 1941, 
the Glenn Miller Band would become one of America's most popular swing ensembles.
In June of 1942, Glenn Miller applied for a commission to join the Navy. Even with a recommendation from Bing Crosby stating, I found him to be a very high type young man, full of resourcefulness and adequately intelligent. Apparently, adequate wasn't okay with the Navy. He was denied a commission, but this being wartime, the Army had a spot for him. Brigadier General Charles Young wrote Miller about streamlining military music, and Miller wasted no time, replying, I feel I could really do a job for the Army in the field of modern music. I am 38 years of age and in excellent physical condition. I was born in Clarinda, Iowa, and raised in Colorado. This was good enough for the Army. By the spring of 1943, Miller found himself frustrated with the resistance of some of the older Army officers with his attempt to streamline military music. He wanted to bring the music up to date, and it was his drummer, Ray McKinley, who suggested taking a blues tune and giving it a marching beat.
What makes a fella start thinking of falling in love? It's not the season, the reason, it's plain as the moon. It's just Elmer's tune. What makes a lady a baby go out of the loose? Why does a gander meander in search of a goose? What puts the kick in the chicken, the magic in June? It's just Delbert's too. Listen, listen. There's a lot you're liable to be missing. Singing, swinging. Any old day and any old time. The hurdy gurdy, the birdie, the cop on the feet. The candy maker, the baker, the man on the street. The city charmer, the farmer, the man in the moon. Y'all see Gabbers too. The 
One way of looking at Glenn Miller's achievements, especially during wartime, was his ability to bring the United States together as a nation, regardless of age, race, or background. He had hits on every chart in America, including 16 number one records and 69 top 10 hits. Elvis Presley only had 38, and the Beatles, 33. Swing music boosted morale and brought a sense of normalcy to the troops serving overseas. It was a reminder of not only the freedom they were fighting for, but of the freedom that existed back home. Liberated nations also became familiar with the sound of swing. As the music followed Allied troops, it became synonymous with the sound of freedom, a connection that still exists to this day. And for the families back home in America, Miller's music served as a comfort, a means to lift spirits, as they waited with anticipation for the return of their loved ones after the war.
to the bar. Hey, boogie rhythm, you can't blow a note unless the basic guitar is playing with him. He makes the company jump when he was traveling. He's the boogie, boogie, bugle boy, company B. Glenn Miller's most influential hit is unquestionably Moonlight Serenade. It's crossed generations and has been covered by the likes of Frank Sinatra and Carly Simon. In 2004, Gary Giddens of The New Yorker wrote, can any other record match its ability to induce a Pavlovian slobber in so many for so long? A top 10 hit upon its release, Miller's signature tune would become a staple of wartime America. Today, each branch of the U.S. military, in addition to their concert and marching units, has jazz bands and other groups playing rock, country, and bluegrass. Much of this can be traced back to Miller's original Army Air Force Band. On September 18, 1947, the United States Air Force was established as a separate branch of the U.S. Armed Forces. By 1950, the United States Air Force Band was carrying on well-known musical traditions in the stylings of concert and marching bands. The United States Air Force Band's Airmen of Note continue the legacy of Glenn Miller's Army Air Force Band to this day. By continuing to perform his music, they give life to Miller's own words. America means freedom, and there's no expression of freedom quite so sincere as music.
With a sad lament, my dream is faded like a broken melody. While the gods of love look down and laugh at what romantic fools we mortals be.
before joining the Army at age 38, Miller had already found great success. His band had appeared in Hollywood films, and he received the first ever gold record for Chattanooga Choo Choo. On December 15, 1944, Miller was a passenger on a single-engine UC-64 Norseman, departing from the outskirts of Bedford, England. The trip was in preparation to move his Army Air Force band to Paris. The plane went missing over the English Channel. Miller's disappearance was not made public until Christmas Eve 1944. He left behind a wife and two children. His body was never recovered. To this day, he is officially listed as missing in action. America would mourn an icon, but his unmistakable big band sound lived on. Chattanooga, 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 Ch
We go. 